Hello, Michael here. Welcome to a preview of our patron exclusive episode on The Matrix Resurrections, available now on our Beyond the Screenplay Patreon. In this segment, we discuss our initial big picture reactions to the film. As a heads up, there are spoilers for The Matrix Resurrections in this clip. To listen to the full episode, just click the link in the show notes or head over to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon at patreon.com slash beyond the screenplay. We'll be back on Friday with an episode from our Patreon vault on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Enjoy. Hello, patrons. Uh, Michael here with the whole team, Trisha Oran. Hello, everybody. Brian Bittner. Hello, hello. Whose voice is straining. We'll yes, I have, I've had a sore throat for a few days, so deal with it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex Calleros. Hi. And we are here to talk about The Matrix Resurrections, directed by Lana Wachowski, written by Lana Wachowski, David Mitchell, and Alexander Heman? Heman? I'm not sure. He-Man. Uh, he, was it? He-Man. He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're recording this the night of December 23rd. We've all just seen it within the past 24 hours. Uh, and now we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to start. So uh, it was really, it was a great build up to the theater experience. I saw it in my hometown theater where I saw all Aww. the originals, mm. the two that I got to see in theaters anyway, with some of my close friends that I saw the originals with and like, the group that basically started the like we go and see a movie and then we talk about it afterward that like is the thing that i always tap into when, when we're doing this podcast so that was really fun uh and yeah the movie started and i don't know that i've been surprised by a big blockbuster movie in a very long uh -huh. time the way i was surprised by this movie uh and it was like just simply delightful i just had so much fun with this movie especially the first 45 minutes, yes. which I want to talk about a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, there was just like this catharsis that I felt during all of that, where it's like, there's going to be swearing in this episode also. So everyone can look <laughs> out. But it just felt like such a cathartic, like, fuck you to yeah. everything in yes. the system. And yes. like, I was just like, yeah, man, like, fuck yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of the movie happened and it was like, all right, yeah, cool. That's all stuff that I watched and enjoyed. Um, so yeah, overall I had a ton of fun and this was a far more interesting movie than I was expecting it to be. And I'm yeah, excited to talk about all of, all of the things. Um, so yeah, so that was my experience. Who wants to share their experience next? I'll go. Go for it. Alex. Um, yeah, no, I, as I mentioned in our Matrix Revolutions uh, podcast, you know, what my expectations for this movie uh, were. And it, basically, it lived up to my expectations and exceeded them a bit, which is essentially this is a like this is a 2021 Wachowski motion picture, which is going to be goofy. It's going to be weird. It's going to be tongue in cheek. It's going to be a, kind of a mess, but it's also going to have a ton of heart be really earnest uh, and just kind of just a lot of fun in a way that I was thinking about, you know, why do I find revolutions to be such a drag? And I think yeah, we talked about, we talked about in, in a few different movies, the problem, you know, in a film when nobody smiles, you know, where <laughs> right. mm -hmm. everybody, everything's just so dour and serious. Uh, and even if the movie has interesting themes or interesting ideas, it's just not fun to sit in that space for two and a half hours. And this movie is just so, alive and wild and wacky and really fun world building actually uh, that happens and it, i i just was delighted uh, also and you know there's there's times where i am longing for you know original matrix level action scenes i am longing for coherent uh, fight choreography that i can follow <laughs> uh in, in you know precisely framed shots that are gorgeous uh you know, there's there, there is there are gorgeous shots in this movie, but the fight scenes I found in, in general were lacking. Um, but what you get instead of that is this kind of postmodern meta, like yeah, fu movie from Lana Wachowski, and I also felt that catharsis. You know, I 
I went and did my duty and saw Spider-Man No Way Home uh, last <laughs> week. And no and spoilers. We won't no do any spoilers, spoilers for it. No, no spoilers for that. But, uh, you know, I, I had a good time. You know, it was a good time at a Marvel movie and it did all of the things that like it was supposed to do. And everybody absolutely loves it. And it's perfect for everybody. But man, I this was such a more interesting, uh, surprising, uh, exciting experience uh, in the cinema because, like you were saying, Michael, I really had no idea what was going to happen next or what I was in for with this movie. It is, it does have that wild, like box within a box within a box layers of kind of an original Matrix movie, but just a lot looser and wackier. Um, so anyway, that's, those are all my thoughts, basically, which is that I also was delighted, had a great time. And even though, you know, during the parts of the movie, I was like, ooh, this is not good, or ah, this is kind of awkward or not great. I'm really excited to watch it again. Like, there, there are ideas mm -hmm. and themes and little monologues that I didn't quite catch everything that I want to go back and catch, uh, which says something. Like, this movie has a lot packed into it, and I am genuinely excited to rewatch it, even though it wasn't this, like, perfect you know, uh, perfect package like the first Matrix. It's it's a mess, but it's a mess that is exciting, and I want to go revisit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I def I definitely want to come back and talk about the things that it's talking about and the way it does it because I yes I think they're really cool. Um, cool, Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, just I feel exactly the same way that you and Alex do. Um, I had a blast. Uh, I came away just feeling elated that something that could have landed with this thud actually managed to sort of like dance in lightly and like playfully. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and and like optimistically and like with fun, you know, mm. sort of at the forefront and, you know, which is not a guarantee in today's world of movies, especially not in the world of sequels. Like fun is not a priority for studios. Um, and it's certainly not an expectation of audiences. Modern audiences kind of hate fun. It feels like most of the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, I really, I really loved um, the, the great big old swing that Lana Wachowski took at this. And, you know, what I, I didn't want was a really uh, safe and also like franchise film that is trying to pretend it's its own movie and it's trying to pretend that in the case of like something like Star Wars, it's trying to pretend that 60 years have not elapsed or whatever, you know, like I didn't want something that was trying to pretend that 20 years have not elapsed. And, and that was trying to like act like we're all the same people. The audience is all the same people that we were mm, when mm -hmm. the franchise you know, first came about or that the world is the same place that it was. And I hate movies that try to pretend to do that. And I hate movies that pretend to do that extra badly <laughs> right. where like <laughs> the characters are like again i'm gonna pick on something like the rise of skywalker but it's just like look at all of us we're star warsing but we're we're not gonna look straight into camera but we are kind of like gonna talk about the discourse things that have happened in like the meta text or you know the paratext of this franchise without actually talking about them like that kind of trying to have your cake and eat it too where you're like trying to make a straight ahead movie while existing in the world of here we all are, you know, in a fandom that have been like discussing these films at length for however long. And like, I just, I respect the hell out of the approach to charge head on into that shit. Like I, <laughs> I can't respect it more. And, you know, audiences don't always like that. And, I walked out of this theater and I was like, people are going to hate this. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people are yeah. going to hate this. Right. Like, because it's sometimes really unpleasant to be reminded of like the fact that, you know, we exist in, we as like, especially film people, right? Like we exist in this inescapable web of, of constant, I don't know, warring about like our favorite franchises and things. And, and also like our being, being reminded that 
what we're watching is a, a product and what we're watching is a business proposition, right? Mm -hmm. Like audiences don't like to be reminded that like people are here to take their money. Uh, we really, really hate <laughs> it when movies remind us of that while we're trying to enjoy them. And so I, I, I mean, I was very much just like, wow, I just walked out of the last Jedi of the matrix mm -hmm. franchise and people are, it's going to be real divisive. <laughs> so I'm really happy that three of us are on the same page, Brian. <laughs> ah, no pressure, no pressure, Brian. Are you here to bring the other side? Be honest, be honest. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely not here to be on the other side. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I have things I didn't love about it, as sure. I'm sure we all did. Um, but ultimately, I, I wasn't excited for another Matrix movie. It just wasn't something I felt like I needed. Um, but, you know, the trailers look good, and, and I was like, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, and then in the first act, I was like, you know what? I'm I'm more interested in a movie about the Matrix than another Matrix movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So I had a lot of fun. You know, we this is not the first time a movie has like done the meta about itself. You know, um, like uh, I think it was Arrested Development season three where they got. Um, they were supposed to have 22 episodes and it turned into 18. So then there's like a line where they're like, well, our housing, you know, contract is supposed to be 22, but they cut it down to 18. So we're going to have to make that work, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, so you literally have uh, Jonathan Groff being like, <laughs> like Warner yeah. Brothers is going to make another Matrix movie after the original trilogy or another Matrix with or without you. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, can they do that? Oh, they can do anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 So like, yeah, all it's the so meta, direct. right. All the meta <laughs> about reboots, all the meta about the Matrix itself, you know, like all the montage of people talking about the Matrix and what it means and everything. Um, Cause it F's with your head. Um, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, and I was just having a great time with that. And then, yeah, as you were saying, the sort of the sort of problem with so many sequels being like, oh, we're just doing all the same beats again and trying to disguise them so you don't notice it. And I appreciated that they were like, no, we are just literally going to do line for line, you know, for for this. Um, and that was a lot of fun. But then it was half the movie of <laughs> yeah, now we're doing kung fu training. Now we're doing the and it was fun to see how sometimes they turned it on its head and sometimes they didn't, you know, but it but it started to wear on me a little bit where I was like, OK, it's been a while now that we've just really been rehashing the plot of the first movie, but with kind of new takes on it all. And then the second act happens and like we're in IO and Niobe is there, which is awesome. But then yeah, there's cool. more disobeying of direct orders. It's like, oh, now we're in. <laughs> now I we're in greatest so hits. Much, right. <laughs> greatest <laughs> hits. <laughs> you, you, we're going to have to lock you in this room and, and da da da. And then Morpheus, <laughs> like, you want to get out of here? Okay, let's go. Like, what? What? Um, and and then Sati shows up and it's like each act of this movie was the was each Matrix movie, right? The, like the Merovingian <laughs> and then the second act and then Sati in the third act. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I sort of started to just lose focus. I was like, look, I know at the end of this, we're trying to get Trinity out. But right now, what are we doing? There's like a heist and we're right. and now it's World War Z with like matrix people like what is going on so so i didn't i didn't dislike any of it as much as i started to tune out a little bit in, in in that chunk of the movie where i was just like what does this mean why are we here what's going on um and i also like the action scenes were okay you know what mm -hmm. i mean like a lot of times the camera was too far too close and and it was like yeah this is this doesn't feel matrixy they weren't even doing a lot of matrixy stuff um and then the last 10 minutes was the fucking coolest thing ever. And <laughs> it just made me so happy. And I was like, oh, my God, I got Matrix, vi like Matrix goosebumps now from that whole, you know, finale with Trinity. But why did we have to wait two and a half hours to get here? Why couldn't that have happened at the midpoint? And then we have a movie of from there, you know? So, so like, I left the theater feeling happy just because of how, how much I loved that finale um but it just felt frustrating that it was that it took the entire movie to get to like what i was hoping for mm -hmm. from from mm -hmm. this movie yeah 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 i i definitely think it's fair that anyone that went into this movie wanting a movie might be disappointed <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> Uh, like wanting a normal movie that is right. like you know what what you would expect you know if Warner Brothers had gone with another another director yeah right. and done the safe franchise reboot it right. would have been you know a movie. A, the Force Awakens you know it <laughs> sure. would have right. been like a straight faced like here's a new Matrix reboot new visual effects 
you know, more, everything's more expensive, but it's, we're going to do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's not what this was. No. Well, I mean, yeah, like yes and no. And, and I think maybe this is, this is where I'm still not sure if I'm projecting, but it, it feels to me like the whole movie is at once uh, earnestly trying to say things and create cool feels for the audience, but also critiquing like, are you happy now? Like we, we redid right. it, yeah. we rebooted it like the way you wanted. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why, yeah, that, that first act, the first 45 minutes. And as you mentioned, Brian, that scene with Jonathan Groff, where he's just like, listen, things have changed. The market's tough. I'm sure you can understand why our beloved parent company, Warner brothers has decided <laughs> to make a sequel trilogy with or without us. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's just such, for me, that was such a great context to put mm -hmm. into a movie like it's almost as if you know like the rise of skywalker had started with a 20 minute monologue from jj abrams being <laughs> like look this is a shitty situation but we just have to do stuff right so whatever you're going to get after this it's just it's just what we have to do because like we got to do something but like these are not ideal circumstances and so i really i just yeah loved that this movie does that because then i was able to read the things that felt like rehashing rebooty stuff as just like commentary on mm -hmm. that of like right this is what you wanted right studio like right audience you wanted <laughs> right. the matrix again look you got it but then also throughout uh yeah interweaving commentary on where we are now as a culture and as a society and just like there's so many little moments that I've, I've been watching it again today. I'm like halfway through. Me too. Uh, but just like, what, there's a moment. Oh yeah, at some point when when Neo's getting taken to prison, the guy who's leading him there is talking about like, yeah, things were simpler back in the day. Like people wanted to be free. Now it feels like people don't even want to like. Be, mm -hmm. It's like the Matrix want. Like there's so many things that are just like, I feel like biting commentary about our world. Right. intermixed with look we did the matrix again intermixed with fun like fan service almost fan fiction stuff of like and yes. then you also get to see neo and trinity fly away holding hands yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. exactly <laughs> yes yeah it's fanfic and it's great fanfic yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope you enjoyed that preview of our episode on The Matrix Resurrections. If you want to hear the full hour and 11 minute episode, you can head over to the Beyond Screenplay Patreon. The link is in the show notes below, or if you're watching on YouTube, just click the little pop-up that happens in the top right. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>